Tonight I'm going to tell you a little story about the Tuskegee Airmen's search for excellence. Excellence is a state of mind. And as African Americans, we have a lot to be grateful for. We have a lot to be proud of because of the excellence of our people. How many of you know, and I know you know, that the first person to go to the North Pole was an African-American, Matthew Henson. Matthew Henson, in 1907, went with Admiral Perry to the North Pole, and he was the first one because he led Admiral Perry there. How many of you know that Garrett Morgan was the first to develop the traffic light that we all respond to today. How many of you know that Lewis Latimer, in Flushing, developed the first incandescent bulb? All of you know that, because all of you are students of black history. All of you have been exposed to those stories. But then when you come to a group like the Tuskegee Airmen, you wonder, how did these men get the opportunity and be so successful flying in the air when at that time no blacks had been allowed to join the military, no blacks were allowed to become flyers, the blacks who were allowed to join the military were in segregated units, and they felt in terms of a study at the War Department that African Americans didn't have the intelligence, the coordination, the bravery to be fighter pilots or to be pilots. But because of our collective history of excellence, because of Matthew Henson, Garrett Morgan, and George Washington Carver, the African American community knew, as do we, that African American can do anything that anybody else can do, and many times do it better. And because of the black press, and the NAACP, and the black churches, they put pressure on Franklin Roosevelt, who was running for his third term in 1940, to create a flying group. The first group was called the 99th Pursuit Squadron. Why did they have a pursuit squadron and a bomber squadron? Because a pursuit squadron only required one pilot in a plane, and the bomber pilot required one pilot and nine other people, and they didn't want blacks to be able to be over some white people. They then had to determine where they would train us to be pilots. They chose Tuskegee, Alabama. Now, interestingly enough, this is just like today. The NAACP wanted us to be trained in integrated circumstances. But all of the places where pilots were trained were in the South. And many people knew that if we were spread all around, we'd never get a fair shake. So President Fred Patterson of Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University, said, you can come to Tuskegee. We have a community that's a college community. We have a veterans hospital there. We have good schools there. And we are educated enough to be able to fight back against the racism. So they created a flying field there, known as Moton Field after the former president of Tuskegee University, and they began to bring blacks in to be trained. But then the question is, who are they going to get? Because the War Department said that blacks didn't have that ability. So what they did was to go to the black colleges and to some of the white colleges where blacks had already begun to take some primary flying training and recruit them to become Tuskegee Airmen. All of us had to take tests. The tests were very difficult, but we were also good students in math and science, and we passed those tests. 
So when we came to Tuskegee, to Moton Field to be trained, we first were trained by black pilots who were civilian pilots, and then we were trained by white pilots who were military pilots. But one of the problems was some of the white instructors at that time didn't believe that they should be there and that we should be there. And the person who was in command of the base uh, supported them. But again, because of the pressure of the black press and the black community, they said these boys at that time, we were, were not getting a fair shake. So as a result of that, they replaced that commander with another white commander who had been a student of history and understood the skills and abilities of African Americans, and we saw that we got a fair shake. So out of that, we then began to deal with what we call excellence, because we were all good students, good athletes, good leaders. We had a lot of competition among us. And in order to graduate, you had to keep your scores up, you had to do well in the air. And to turn that competition of the 3,000 who were brought there to be trained as pilots, 1,000 of them did graduate, 650 were single-engine pilots, and then toward the end of the war, they decided to start a black mama group, the 477. Now, the thing about the Tuskegee Airmen is every step of the way, we had to prove ourselves. Our search for excellence was that we were competing against ourselves, but we were also competing against the racism that said we couldn't do it. So when we graduated and became pilots, lieutenants, the military still didn't want to send us to combat. So the 99th Fighter Squadron had more training than any fighter squadron because they wouldn't let them go overseas. Finally, they took the squadron, which was 16 planes, 30 pilots, over to North Africa and assigned them to the 33rd Fighter Group, which had a biased commander. So in the first briefing, that's where they tell you where your mission's going to be, they gave them the wrong time, so they came in 15 minutes late, and when our commander, uh, Colonel Davis, said, well, look, you gave us the wrong time, how are we gonna know what to do? The commander said, your boys just follow me. That was their briefing. But because of the excellence of their training, they were able to figure out where the target was, they were able to meet the target, they were able to shoot down planes, and as a result, when the word came back that the 99th wasn't doing the job because the white leaders were saying they weren't doing the job, Colonel Davis was brought back to meet with the Senate and to explain that number one, they didn't give us instructions. Number two, they didn't give us replacement pilots. Number three, the planes that we had were old. But with all of that, on the day he testified before Congress, the Tuskegee Airmen shot down 13 planes. 13 planes, they could say, yes, we can do it. So as a result of that, that's just the beginning of the story. As a result of that, then they said, well, look, we'll send over three other squadrons, the 100th, the 301st, and the 302nd, to form what's known as the 332nd Fighting Group, along with the 99th. The 332nd Fighting Group flew those red-tailed P-51s escorting bombers at 25 and 30,000 feet deep into Germany. And because of the discipline that we had, Colonel Davis, our commander, who'd been the first black to graduate from West Point in the 20th century, knew about the racism, knew that if we left the bombers to shoot down planes and some of the bombers got shot down, they said, yeah, we knew they couldn't do it. So we insisted that we stay with the bombers. And we stayed with the bombers flying about 500 feet over, very, very close. And as a result of that, the bomber pilots, all of whom were white, began to realize that they were being protected better 
by the red tails flown by the black pilots than they were by any other pilots. So as a result, our reputation grew and grew and grew. And finally, toward the end of the war, on March 24th, 1945, on the longest mission of the 15th Air Force from southern Italy all the way to Berlin, the Tuskegee Airmen escorted those B-17s and over Berlin, those B-17s were then attacked by the new German jet planes that were 100 miles faster than our planes. But because of our training and our skill, I was leading the mission for our squadron, the 100th. And as we got over Berlin, Berlin is like the metropolitan area of New York, all of a sudden, I saw these jet planes coming up under the left. And all of a sudden, with our train, I said to my pilots, drop your fuel tanks and let's go get them. And we went down and I turned into one and I shot down the first jet over Berlin and my other pilots shot down two other jets and the Tuskegee Airmen had saved that mission and because of that we received the Distinguished Unit Citation.